pelvic anatomy. The pelvic floor, where is a pelvic floor? What is this part of my body? I think I've seen pictures of it. Well, today I wanna to discuss a little bit about the pelvis and the pelvic floor and some of the parts of the anatomy because we as women need to understand our body. When we understand our bodies, we can take steps to healing and we are empowered to greater health. My name is Heather Marr and I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist at and I am passionate about the pelvic floor and I just love educating women so that they understand more about their body. So let's take a journey today, learn about the pelvis and some of the important parts of it and why it's relevant for you. Let's jump in. This is the pelvis, also known as the pelvic girdle. If you wanna look here, this is the iliac crest and you can feel it on yourself. Put your hands at the front. The bumpy points at the front are the ASIS. You come down here to the bony part in front, pubic symphysis. If you've been pregnant, you may have had some discomfort here. Even non-pregnant women can have some discomfort at times too. That's a bony area in front. Let's go to the back. This is the lumbar vertebrae, which go into the sacrum, which go into the coccyx. Right here is the SI joint, which can cause some discomfort at times. The sacroiliac joint. The coccyx down here is the tailbone. Sometimes people fall on it and you can have some discomfort where it moves forward. During childbirth, it should move um, and sometimes it can get damaged in childbirth as well. Let's go back to the front. This is the pelvic floor. It's three layers of muscles. And as this is from the out, outer layer and going deeper. Let's look down here. This is the clitoris. This is for sexual enjoyment. You go down and the hole, first one is the urethra. That's where the bladder holds the urine and then the urine comes out. Go down to the next one, it's a vaginal opening or the introitus. This is where uh, if you have a vaginal delivery, this stretches wide. Or for sexual intercourse, this is where the, you, the penis is inserted. Come down farther and this is the anus or the rectal opening. Again, this is the area where the stool comes out and you can hold back gas. So what's happening is we want three hold control. The pelvic floor muscles are amazing. They have to be very dynamic. They're not rigid. They have to be able to contract, relax, and then even lengthen. The pelvic floor needs to lengthen with bowel movements and with vaginal delivery of a baby. Let's go back up here to urinary incontinence. If the pelvic floor muscles are not strong and coordinated, a lot of times we can suffer from urinary incontinence or that involuntary leakage of urine. Unwanted. Let's go back up here to the urethra. If the pelvic floor muscles are not contracting and they're weak or not coordinating, then we can have urinary incontinence, which is the unwanted loss of urine. And there are two different types, urinary incontinence with stress incontinence and urge incontinence. So we'll jump into those in another video. You come down here, the vaginal opening. If the vaginal opening and the pelvic floor cannot relax, then that causes trigger points as well as pain with sex, pain with sitting, a lot of different things. So this is good to understand what's going on that with that pelvic area. And down here, the rectal opening or the anus, it has to be able to open up with a bowel movement as well. And a lot of different things can play into this, but overall, this is the general information about the pelvis and the anatomy. Now, a great thing to do is take a mirror and look at yourself. When you're looking at yourself, you actually see the vulva, not the vagina, because the vagina is actually the internal cavity inside. So the outside is the vulva. And then once you go internally, like where you would insert a tampon or have with intercourse, that is the vaginal cavity. So just a little bit more on the anatomy there. So hopefully today that's given you some more information 
you learned a little bit more about your pelvis, understanding a little bit about what's going on, and it helps you communicate with your doctor if anything's going on. It helps as we educate our children, and even educating and discussing with your partner, especially if there's any discomfort during sex. So, as pelvic floor physical therapists, we love treating this area. The pelvis is an amazing part of the body. It is very dynamic. It can contract, relax, move, support. It's dynamic. So if there is some discomfort, know that you can communicate with your physician, with your pelvic floor physical therapist, and we can work on this area. Again, this is Steps to Healing. Thanks for watching today. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you've enjoyed this, and check out some of the other videos because again, education is empowerment to take the steps to healing. Have a great day.